We're going to continue our uh, look ahead to the start of the new Premier League season. I'm delighted to say that Quiva O'Neill of The Athletic joins us on the line. Good morning to you, Quiva. Morning. Uh, plenty of Liverpool chat to get into here. It felt like... Um, in some ways, there was a lot of acceptance almost last year, certainly at a point in the season where it might have been maybe the end of January into February where uh, things started to turn against Liverpool, um, obviously without Virgil van Dijk, and as it came to it in the end, never real contenders. Um, Jurgen Klopp wasn't quite making those hour-long Vimeo videos, Quiva, of, of uh, you know what had gone wrong, but it definitely signs of pressure on Jurgen Klopp last season. Um What's your sense of the true personality of Liverpool uh, this season with Van Dijk back in the mix and and also talk to us a little bit about that pressure that's on Klopp to get off to a quick start? Yeah, I think they're quietly going under the radar a little bit. No one's got them in the predictions to to win the Premier League, so that'll take a little bit of pressure off. Maybe the you know the pressure last season was obviously there to defend the title, um, which they obviously didn't do. I mean, you know, they put in a good sort of first year from august to december that was title winning form and then obviously they fell apart as we all we all seen in january to march um and then you know they got it back together and, and produced some i mean incredible results i think it was 26 points out of the last 30 they took to obviously qualify for the champions league and sneak that third place which you know when they were around eighth i think it was in the the, the lowest point they got to you know no one would have expected that um, obviously the injuries took the toll and you know the mentality monsters were shaken and, and you know um I think Trent Alexander Arnold told the athletic that you know the he was they, they didn't quite know sort of it was just a weird time and obviously they realized that we're just gonna have to get on with that um and and they did and I think that's sort of the the, the, the big lesson from last season, you know, you, you can't really teach that. You have to experience it. And the, those players have experienced it now. It's definitely was a low point of the season. And, you know, you can learn from that. Obviously, we're having Virgil van Dijk back is just a massive boost to, you know, the whole club, the fans. But just, you know, a fresh season with fans, I think, is massive as well for Liverpool because we know, you know, those six back-to-back defeats at Anfield were unprecedented given Liverpool had, you know, gone undefeated there for close to four years, was it? Um, so, you know, having fans back is is massive. You know, I was at the couple of pre-season games at the weekend, Sunday, Monday, and like, what can you say about about the cop booming and, you know, just, just roaring the players on? And Liverpool really do need that as a team, no matter who's in the side, um, and they really benefit from it. So I think, you know, those shock results we will see less of, whether they can go all the way with obviously Man City having strengthened United as well. And of course, Chelsea are, you know, reigning champions of Europe. It, it kind of feels in a weird way, Quiva, that Van Dijk's had a bit of time uh, to get himself right for the season, as, as if almost the season's coming at a perfect time for him, because like there was definitely a conversation around whether or not he would go to the Euros. So I assume he's had a few months now at this stage of actually running. So so what's your information on, on where he is and what version of Van Dyke we're going to see? Yeah, well, I think Jürgen Klopp said yesterday, you know, Van Dyke is fit enough to start, but whether he will, that's a different matter because obviously you don't want to rush this. You know, he's come back from a, a serious injury and, you know, he is back now and um, just working his way to probably match fitness. You know, his, his body's all everything's going going right for him. He had 70 minutes um the other day and you know looked really good. Maybe, you know, a little bit rusty. That's probably to be expected considering, you know, he's been out since October. I think making the decision not to go to the Euros was, you know, that was a massive decision for him to make. Um, you know, to be captain of Holland at a major tournament, you know, saying saying that he couldn't go to that must have been huge for him. And obviously it was a important decision to make for Liverpool as well, um, you know, to, to make sure that he was going into this season a full tilt. And I think he is. It's just, obviously, I think the Norwich games probably come too soon for him, whether he'll come on at the end to, to show things up, depending on how the results go. And um, we wait and see. But, yeah, I think, you know, he's probably in a good place. Um, he looks in a good place. I haven't, haven't watched him play the other day. Um but again, it's just about probably managing that, and you know Liverpool will do that. Yeah, what you said at the, the start, there, Quiva, is something that we picked up on as well. That when it comes to the predictions about this season, it seems that everybody's writing this as okay, it's a big four, but really it's a it's a two horse race where Chelsea and Manchester City are most people's tip for the title, and if it's not one, they won't have Liverpool in second place either. Is that a wrong analysis? Is that something that you personally disagree with? 
I don't think it's wrong. I think, you know, most people do think Manchester City are going to win the title. And then if they don't, it's either Chelsea or United. Most people are, are back in there. And, you know, most people have pegged Liverpool to be in a, a top four race rather than a title race. And that'll suit Liverpool and Jürgen Klopp down to the ground. You know, they'll they'll go into the season, you know, stick that to the dressing room wall and, and, and crack on. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people are probably looking at us in terms of, um, Jorginho and Alden, one of the best midfielders in the world. Liverpool have lost him and failed to replace him. Um, even though, you know, there's, there's great players there and there is squad depth. You know, Liverpool played two separate teams on Sunday and Monday and pretty strong side. So, you know, there is that strength and depth that Liverpool haven't always had. Um, but again, you know, whether those players are, are good enough to sort of gobble up the minutes that Ginny did because, I mean, he was the machine. If you look, he's probably played, I think, close to the most minutes on the Jürgen Klopp than since he since he joined than any other player. Um, so, you know, that is a massive loss not to replace him. You know, that will be interesting going into the season, sort of in the same way that um, taking Fabinho as fourth choice centre-half into last season was probably, in hindsight, a massive mistake. But obviously, you know, Liverpool have, have fixed that. They've obviously brought in Ibrahim Akanate, who will, you know, shore up defence, hopefully, for Liverpool. And, you know, I mean, they're going to be touching wood and hoping for the best in terms of no major injuries, because that was, I mean, just incredible. Like, you would just, it was a madness, wasn't it, really? Um so yeah, it's gonna be gonna be interesting to see. And um, probably could have done with another attacker just to pick up that goal score and slack. I think it was um, you know, it was laid bare in those those three months, four months, maybe even towards the end of the season, still, even though they were picking up wins. Um yeah. so yeah, I just think it's they're probably two signings away from from really challenging, but um, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rule them out altogether as, as some people are. You know, if, come May if, if Liverpool are fighting for the title, we we won't be massively shocked. Um, but right now, you know, a lot of people are are given given the crown to Man City. But you know, it's a long season, so I guess we'll we'll see. And and that really is the joy in it, just week by week. You know, discussing all of this, and you know, that's what we live for, isn't it? Yeah, it's great to have it back and to have the uh, fans back and all of that. And I and uh, just on your point there about Liverpool's frugality, I guess maybe is the, the way to put it in the transfer market up to this point. And I don't mean this at all as an incendiary question, right? But Liverpool um, are uh, shrewder more frugal in the market than all the teams around them when you look at like we were just discussing earlier on about who the best centre-back pairing in, in the Premier League is at the minute and United are strong contenders now for that uh, for that and we'll see how the season plays out with Varane coming in obviously but uh, I'm coming to the incendiary bit of it now um, is there a chance that Liverpool could become the new Arsenal i.e. a sustainable business model but not winning football I don't think so I mean that's I, I think you know, what Liverpool have done this summer as well. It's, you know, they haven't brought in many players. There is just the one in Canate, but I guess they've, you know, they've um, committed Alisson's long-term future to the club. He's one of, if not the best goalkeeper of the world on his day, Fabinho. He's also committed his, his future to the club. Alexander Arnold, who is, you know, has been the future of Liverpool, living that for, for a few years now. You know, there's exciting players coming through, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. And you, I know the, that feeling is at a lot of clubs, but, you know, there does feel like there's still momentum with Liverpool. I feel like, you know, just sort of the, the marquee signings of Jack Grealish and Jaden Sancho and um, obviously Romelu Lukaku last night do kind of maybe think, you know, let, people are looking at Liverpool in a different way. They're not moving. What are you doing? But, you know, th there is a squad there. And I think, you know, the business model is interesting, but it's got Liverpool to this point. You know, we know how FSG work. They, they generally um, sell before they buy. And, you know, that's work for them. Um, you know, what Liverpool have done over the past few seasons, obviously last season didn't quite go to plan, but that team's still there. There's still champions here, whether they can go and be champions is another question, but, you know, I don't think um, they'll flounder from this point, especially, you know, Jürgen Klopp still, still signed on until 2024 and, you know, you'd, you'd like to think maybe he'd stay a little bit longer. Fans will definitely hope so, but, you know, it's, I think there's, there's still optimism definitely within Liverpool's fan base. I mean, you know, the wider sort of thing and all those predictions which are coming out, which just are ruling Liverpool out as contenders. You know, Liverpool fans have been going into every season for over 30 years saying this is our year. 
and you know everyone's been laughing at them and then when it finally was in 2020 you know no no one could say anything but you know every year they, they go into the season with that same optimism and they'll go into it again because no matter who the players are who the manager is they back the badge they back that team whoever wears the shirt you know mm. fully behind them so it will be will be interesting and um, to see how the season plays out but you know it's it's going to be an enjoyable ride Liverpool fans are third most optimistic according to the Athletics hopeful meter this morning that uh, just behind Crystal Palace it has to be said uh, which is slightly concerning I think but um, look at the, I mean uh, delusional might be uh, might be more accurate uh, Chelsea top of the belly uh, Everton I'm sure Liverpool supporters would be delighted to see the most pessimistic among fans heading into the season uh, Jordan Henderson I was interested to see Quiva still the contract talk seems like it's stalled Arsenal are a club um, that are possibly interested but unthinkable surely that 31 year old Jordan Henderson would leave Liverpool given his influence apart from anything else around the dressing room yeah it, it is unthinkable isn't it really when sort of that news started to break about those talks and um, I wouldn't expect him to leave Liverpool I mean you know I've always said personally I think Jordan Henderson I know a lot of people hold this view should end his career with Liverpool he has to have that you know that bowing out moment um, because he just deserves it. He is Liverpool. He's, you know, he's forged himself to be Liverpool over, you know, a decade now, and um, obviously just, you know, an incredible, incredible footballer, which he didn't always get the credit for. But I think that that shone in the in the past couple of seasons in particular, and you know how he sort of grabbed Liverpool by the scruff of the neck at times, Gerard esque in a way. But um, you know, he didn't always get that credit, and I think his leadership just on the pitch is a massive thing. You know, he barks orders at everyone and sort of is just the the general in there bossing it. Um, and then off the pitch, I think we, we we know just what a great human he is, you know, all the causes he supports and just, you know, especially someone to have around the dressing room, I think is is vital to lose him would be would be massive considering he's he's a starting midfielder as well. You think, you know, Jürgen Klopp will be likely wanting to, to play that midfield trio of Thiago, Fabinho and Henderson. Whether he'll get to do that is uh, Norwich is probably unlikely given Thiago and Henderson are still working their way back to sort of full fitness. They haven't had quite the same pre-season um, as the others. But yeah, Henderson leaving Liverpool, I mean, it would just, that would just be crazy I mean end times it would fail for some Liverpool fans obviously Liverpool would, would move on and Henderson would but I just no I don't think I just yeah just not for me mm. he's got to stay hasn't he surely what about Jurgen Klopp do you think that in a year's time everything is still going to be fine with him at Liverpool obviously the contract goes way beyond next summer another two years uh, beyond that in fact do you think the noise will increase around Jurgen Klopp in his future at the club as this season progresses I think it was interesting when the noise increased last season during those times and people were starting to think, you know, um, you know, could could Jurgen Klopp leave Liverpool, which was a question on nobody's lips before that sort of, you know, that that crisis there after Christmas. I think um, you know, the reaction you've seen from Liverpool fans pretty much said what it, what it, you know what Jurgen Klopp means to them and I don't know you know obviously it's tricky when results don't go your way and if Liverpool have a poor season then you know things will be will be interesting to look at but I don't know I think Jurgen Klopp is safe as houses as Liverpool manager for I mean Liverpool fans would be happy with him for the next decade let alone you know till 2024 so yeah I know the, the pressure can increase on managers but he dealt with it so well last season and yeah it just I think yeah it's the same with Jordan Henson it's it's difficult because this team's so special and brought fans so many memories and to think of it sort of starting to split up is um yeah it's it's a, it's a difficult one to go through <laughs> as you can probably hear my dog everyone in that house is excited about football coming back yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, Quiva. Thanks a million. Enjoy. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot, Quiva O'Neill from The Athletic there looking ahead to um, Liverpool season.